Welcome to Ohio Stadium, home of the Ohio State Buckeyes, and for a day, home away from home for the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. They will be verboing here today uh, at four o'clock when they face the Buckeyes. Uh, we got to go through the availability report because there are a couple different pieces of news, yeah. one good, one less good at the safety position. Last week, Josh Proctor was listed as, you know, sort of questionable game time decision. He ended up not playing. Today, he is playing. He, well, but he's at least, at least not on the availability okay. report at all. So presumably he should be healthy and good to go at that adjuster position for the Buckeyes. The bad news comes right next door at the Bandit, the boundary safety position, Lathan Ransom. He is now listed as questionable. So, you know, maybe a little bit of game time decision there. You know, Tony, what does this do to Ohio State? You know, we're going to go through Lathan Ransom plays versus Lathan yeah, Ransom yeah. doesn't play. If Lathan Ransom doesn't play, what does that do to the Ohio State defense today? I think it does quite a bit because remember, he's the only player who is on defense who has played every snap because they have nobody behind him. And so I think when you say, well, you got Josh Proctor back at adjuster, I'm not so sure. I think you probably put Josh Proctor at Bandit mm -hmm. and John Carter goes to adjuster where he played last mm -hmm. week after coming in for Malik Hartford. I, I don't think you'll see Malik Hartford moving to strong safety because he's a true freshman. You, Yeah, they, they want their three safeties to be able to play everything, but for a true freshman, you're only going to ask so much. So I think he would stay there. And since Jihad Carter replaced him after one series last mm -hmm. week, I would expect for maybe it to be Carter, who, again, was also had some issues. So you don't really want to ask too much of him at this point. So maybe it makes sense to just leave him where he was last week and where he has been even. And, and then, you know, with, with Proctor playing the Bandit last year, mm -hmm. that seems like it would be the easiest, quickest fix for a situation where you've lost, you presumably have lost your, theoretically have lost your <laughs> top safety against the most prolific passing game you'll see this season. And you know, with this being a team that's going to be throwing it all over the place, last week I think we came in and um, you know before when we saw Question Bowl we said that means out for yeah. Proctor because you're playing Youngstown State and Youngstown State is an FCS team and they're going to be running the ball more than they're passing the ball. So that adjuster position, you can do some other stuff with that there. I do wonder with this being Western Kentucky and them being a little, you know, not a little more, a lot more pass happy than Youngstown State and a much higher level of competition than Youngstown State. I get the sense that questionable probably really does mean questionable and we're going to have to keep a close eye on Lathan Ransom when the Buckeyes come over to the stadium. They come over to the stadium like an hour 50 before the game. So if you were watching this live as it goes up, it's going to be about 10 minutes from now. We'll, they'll walk over and then we'll see them out during warm-up. So we get a pretty good sense usually an hour or so before the game, who's really going through warm-ups, who's, you know, just kind of out there and dressed but not really doing stuff. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that. The only other new name on the availability report this week, not a surprise if you watched last week's game, Arvell Reese out this week. He got hurt on a kick return last week. And, you know, I mean, that was, it looked like maybe he hit his head on the turf. But, I mean, it was hard, it's hard to tell what the injury was, but, you know, that's one where you're, really just playing special teams, yep. play it safe, no no reason to rush into anything. Yeah, absolutely. Give them some time off and just, you, you don't want to compound it by mm -hmm. getting back out there and having it happen again. Mm -hmm. So just give them some time off. But overall, that's obviously Lathan Ransom, the big name, Arvell Reese, the new name. Nothing else, of, no, no other changes. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're relatively healthy. And I say that based on all of the mess that we saw last year. Yeah. Not not to invoke last year at all, <laughs> but so far things seem so good. Yeah, and the the only other guys out. These are all names you heard us talk about last week, and I think mostly the week before that too. Wide receiver Keon Graves, tight end Zach Herbstreet, uh, defensive lineman Will Smith, uh, walk on wide receiver uh, Reese Stocksdale, and safety Court Williams. Those are all guys who you know we've kind of known are banged up, not ready to go, and probably long-ish term. The one, you know, last week we talked about the, the, the strange fact that Mari Abor was not on the list after, after we'd been told he had been, you know, he was a long-term injury, like maybe season-ending injury, and then he played last week. So, uh, mystery solved, Mari Abor is still here and still playing for Ohio State, uh, you know, mir miraculous recovery. Fast uh, healer. Uh, apparently, yeah. So, that was, uh, that was a little bit of good news for Ohio State. And he's, you know, you're going to want some depth on that defensive line. I do wonder how deep they go today, because you're expecting... You know, not just at the defensive line position, but at corners and safety and everywhere, because young or Western Kentucky is going to try to spread you out, make you run around, 
make your defensive line go sideline to sideline, tire you out. It feels like you've got to rotate. You're not, you shouldn't have defensive linemen playing 50 snaps against this team because they're gonna, you know, you're gonna tire guys out. But this is also gonna be enough of a real legitimate stress test for them that you can't go, you can't just throw in the third teamers and go, yeah, it'll be fine. No, for sure. And they're going to try to put up, what, maybe 80 plays today. Mm -hmm. you know, and so is that 30-30, uh, 20-20 20 for the 30-30-20, um, for the the however they want to do it, for the four uh, defensive ends that they'll be playing. And maybe we see more Kenyatta Jackson just because they will have to go deeper. Mm -hmm. We know we're going to see Jack Sawyer, JT Tui Moloa, Caden Curry. Those three are a given. Mm -hmm. We'll see Caden Curry inside as well. Some of the rushmen. I wonder if they do more of that this week because there will be more rushing the passer. However, Western Kentucky gets rid of the ball so quickly that there there will probably be some times where it's like do an initial rush, get your hands up, that sort of thing. So yeah. it's not like you're trying to get to the quarterback every single time. You maybe get the you, you, you knock the pass out of the air, that sort of thing. Maybe that conserves some energy and allows you to play more snaps. It just depends on how they want to do it because we've seen. If you watch Western Kentucky, and anytime they play these teams, Ohio State plays these teams that throw the ball 70% of the time, it's it's a lot of quick throws, short throws. The air rate is that. You know, it's the Texas Tech, Mike Leach, quick stuff, quick screens and things like that. And they have not given, given up any sacks this year, and it's not because the offensive line is outstanding. They just get rid of it quickly. And so uh, I think when they do go deep, those are the times you want that pass rush to get home. Yeah, and, you know, the part of the pass rush is the coverage, and part of the coverage is the pass rush. That's something that, that uh, Jim Knowles talked about this week. That's something that we've talked about a bunch in the past. Part of, you know, if the if the receiver's not open right off the line, you can't get the ball out. You got to, you, then you're looking for your second read, your third read, and that's when maybe you do get the rush home. The Buckeyes are going to have to press probably a little bit. You can't give up the easy you know, the easy five yarders, yeah. because even if you get them on the ground, if they're completely, you know, dinking and dunking those five yarders, you get into the third and four and, and or second, or, you know, third and one, or third and second and four or whatever, that's, those are all very makeable. You know, this is, that's something that Western Kentucky excels at. You've got to make them earn it. And when they get the, when they catch the ball downfield, you got to get guys to the ground and not let a not let that five seven yard pass turn into a 15 20 yard pass well and ryan day has said they want personally on offense they just want four yards of carry each time mm -hmm. and then you'll be fine western kentucky will take four yards of completion each time and then because you'll just continue to move the chains and they'll throw a lot of screens so you, know, you, you got some blocking outside and as long as they can just continue to stay on schedule and avoid that third and nine you know second and 11 like the, the negative play on first down then they're going to feel pretty good about having, even if they get a throw in completion the first down, they're going to feel good about getting five yards on second down, five yards on third down because of the way they spread you out and they don't have to throw downfield to be happy. Yeah, you, you can live within that, you know, 10 yards, 15 yards from the line of scrimmage and just play after play after play and just you're averaging, even if you're averaging six yards of completion, if you get two, with, you know, two out of three, congratulations, you've got a first down. That, that's... Yeah, you know, so that that's kind of where they live. This just this feels like it's going to be a game that's frustrating for Ohio State fans because this is just you look at the recruiting rankings, and this is not a team that should be hanging with Ohio State. But it feels like just the scheme, they're just they're a pain in the butt to play. It's you know this is the polar opposite of playing a service academy in terms of what they're actually running, but the result is sort of the same. Where it's just they do. I mean, air raid teams do like three or four things but they do them so well they just drill the same that was always mike leach's thing you just you play you, you have your you know your cross you've got your four verts you've got just your few different plays and you just drill them and drill them and drill them until you can execute them better than the opponent can and then you just you just out execute people down the field which is you know that's gonna that is gonna be very frustrating if that's how it goes for uh you know for ohio state today in western kentucky's Picking up for picking up a bunch of first downs and you know turning some of those into touchdowns, and you know I think that's also going to be frustrating for the Ohio State offense if they're watching that because that's been something where they have not gotten the number of snaps that they wanted the first few weeks, and it feels like this might be you know if they can't get off the field on third down again today the defense, then you're going to have the same issue again, you know and and you know maybe a little bit of it's the clock but it's not entirely the clock if some of it is just you got to get off the field on defense on third down, so how do you see Ohio State? Take, you know, when, when Ohio State does have the ball, however much that is, 
Western Kentucky is not a big, not great, not a great run defense this year. But you get the sense they probably also want to throw with Kyle McCord in his first start and kind of establish that passing into. What are you envisioning from the Ohio State offense today? I feel like they'll be able to do whatever whatever they want to do. They don't have to set something up to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. I think they can run the ball just fine based on based on watching USF run the ball really, really well against Western Kentucky. I'm going to assume that Ohio State can do similar things and then more because there are plenty of times against USF and that was the first game of the season. You make improvements. Mm -hmm. But there, there were times where, you know, one guy was making a touchdown saving tackle on a 20 yard run that would have been 70 or 80. And I could see those becoming touchdowns in this game if they have the lanes that USF had. So I don't know that you necessarily need to throw to open anything up. I don't think you need to run to open anything up. Mm -hmm. I think you've got the skill. Uh, if the offensive line holds up, you just run your offense mm -hmm. and whatever happens, happens. And you'll be fine with it. I don't think this is a situation where week one, they wanted to, you know, maybe we thought maybe let's see them establish a run, show that offensive line. Week two, we thought they'd come out throwing because they needed to get Kyle McCord going, you know, things like that. This one, it's just time to operate the offense. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be a little bit, I mean, it's going to be a little bit of a test to see what Kyle McCord looks like when it's just Kyle McCord. Because, like, yeah. you know, after the game last week, I think we both maybe had the sense that, you know, when you're moving quarterbacks in and out, like you wanted to see both guys last week, so okay, it makes sense. But when, you, when you're moving guys in and out, you can get a little bit out of sync, a little bit out of rhythm. Now it's Kyle McCord's job. Ryan Dace has said, you know, it is Kyle McCord's job, and you may see Devin Brown, you know, end of the game, but, it, you know, this is like you might have seen Kyle McCord last year where it's C.J. Stroud's job, and you might see, you know, the backup later if you're out of hand. It, I, I, I am so interested to see what a full game of Kyle McCord looks like, because we have not seen a full game of Kyle McCord really, in, 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 sort of the Akron game in 2021, but, you know, that was not really uh, a, a reasonable level of competition. So I, I'm so interested to see what what does a good Kyle McCord game, what, what defines a good Kyle McCord game for you today? Is it touchdown passes? Is it completion percentage? Is it yards per attempt? What, what, is a, what does success look like for Kyle McCord today? I think um, just based on the box score, if you were to look at the box score and throw it into a CJ Stroud box score and like shuffle them up and not know that, oh, this is clearly Kyle McCord, something like that. I, you know, I think his over under touchdown or yards for yards passing in this one was something like 313 and a half. So, you know, clearly people are expecting him to be able to move the ball and so do I. So I'm expecting over 300 yards, multiple, you know, this is a game where if four touchdowns, three or four touchdown passes should be the expectation, and if he goes beyond that, that would be very bold. Uh, but I think just a an average, really good performance, which is a strange thing to say, but when you're talking about Ohio State quarterbacks, it means 340 yards passing, four touchdowns, no interceptions, completing 68% of your passes, stuff that never used to happen around here, but is now the norm. Yeah, I like the fact that this is his first true full game as a starter, and it's like your your level is like, well, let's see if it looks like a CJ Stroud yeah, game. I mean, like, all right, you remember where he went in the draft, yes. right? Like, uh, Welcome to Columbus, where the expectations never die. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they can also do on the ground, because this, this offensive line has been, it's like it has felt sometimes like, well, that was, you know, that was better. It was something you had tangible improvement from week one to week two. This is a game they should be able to run the ball. If they can't run the ball, that's a concern. Mm -hmm. If they can run the ball, if they do run the ball and they I get five and a half, six yards of carry, you know, and it's not crazy numbers, but it's like, okay, they're consistently running the ball and that's not just skewed by one 97 yard run. Is that encouraging or is that kind of like yeah well that's what you're supposed to do well i think it's okay to be encouraged by improvement week to week so i'm not going to say i'm not going to tell somebody don't be encouraged by improved performance mm -hmm. you know so in, in that way you should be encouraged uh, and this is one of those things where we say against bad opponents the only thing you can learn is something bad western kentucky is not a bad opponent but the run defense is bad yeah so that's the kind that's where the the learning that is with the, this game in terms of what Ohio State can do on the ground. But uh, if they can't run it, then it's going to be not good news for next week. If they yeah. can run it, that gives you some hope, gives you some momentum, gives you some things to con continue to build on. Oh, this guy did well on this kind of block. This, these guys do well as a team. We did better on these sort of things. Let's continue that, carry it over into the Notre Dame game because this is something that everybody likes to do. Everybody does it well. The running backs run off of it well. 
So it, it would be good, it would be encouraging to find things that work well, if nothing else. And what did you end up going with as a score prediction for this one? I, I think I ended, it was either 45-24 or 42-24. I think I landed on 42-24, so not covering the line. And I'm sure, I mean, 24 points. If Ohio State gives up 24 points, it is going to be Jonestown on Twitter. But I think that's just, this is a team that is going to stress you in a way that most other teams are not and cannot on this schedule. Even the more talented teams are not going to stress you in this same way. So this is not necessarily a disaster if they give up 21 points. If they give up, if they hold them to 13 points or something, that's going to be that's going to be a wow to me. Because I, you know, in in the same way that I don't think you're going to see anything on def, uh, on offense that's like oh boy, yeah, definitely everything's fixed. Mm -hmm. If they hold this team to 14 points or less, say. I think I look at that and I go, okay, I'm, I think, officially a believer on the secondary and sort of the pass defense writ large. Yeah, 14 points, something like that, under 20 is really good. Mm -hmm. um, I had it 52-21, uh, so I think, I expect, we're, we both expect yards and points, just because that's what they do. The first drive won't shock me if Western Kentucky goes down the field and scores. Oh, I I'm expecting it. Yeah, yeah, that's just the norm, and then you adjust and you build from there, and then uh, a, a, a big play, a broken play at some point, you complete a long pass on another drive, and then there's another random drive somewhere with the, you know, so I, if you if you eliminate the, the randomness and you control things and you hold them under 14, you know, to 14 or under 17, something like that, I think that is also something that you walk away from saying, wow, this was, this is a good performance against a, a good offense that is not your typical offense. And it's the, the ability for this defense to continue to be successful against atypical offenses makes you uh, think that they would also be okay against typical offenses. Yeah, and Notre Dame is a little bit more of a main line. They're gonna throw it a lot, but they're not an air raid team next week. So it's not apples to apples, and it certainly isn't apples to apples talent-wise. But I think if Ohio State does keep them to under 20 points, that's probably a pretty encouraging sign for Buckeye fans heading into that game in South Bend next weekend. Uh, before we get to that game in South Bend, we got to watch this game in Columbus. And then after this game in Columbus, we're going to do a post-game show. You were, we would love to see you there joining us after the game. Uh, we'll have a full, uh, our usual full post-game coverage live from Ohio Stadium uh, that kicks off right at the end of the game. And then we'll get to uh, the Brian Day post-game press conference. We'll try and get you some of the Ohio State players and uh, much more all after the game. And then Tony and I, of course, doing the Buckeye Weekly Instant Reaction Show after that, usually about an hour or so after the game, you can find us. So we'll have all of that coverage at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. And if you prefer to listen and you're not necessarily able to be there live, you can find us on our po your podcast platform of choice, down on the Buckeye Weekly podcast feed. Uh, and if you want to just find all of our shows, you can just search Buckeye Huddle and you can do that. They're all great. You should just subscribe to all of them, listen to them all. Yeah, and make sure you are uh, leaving us a five-star rating and review as well. It helps other folks find those shows. We appreciate that as well. That will do it for now. Enjoy the football, and we will talk to you guys after the game.